Today we're taking a look at the CPS Digital Torque Wrench. I'll take you through exactly how this thing works and we'll even torque a fitting on this mini split installation that we're doing right behind me. These open-ended style torque wrenches are used frequently in situations where you need to torque flare connections because you cannot get a standard socket around that flare connection and you also have to get into fairly tight spaces fairly frequently. I'm not sponsored by CPS in any way. This is something that I paid full price for. I uh, just want to show you guys what this thing is like and some of the basics for how this thing operates. I will link to this in the description underneath this video so if you are looking to pick one up you can do so right down there. So the wrench comes in this nice carrying case as you can see and the finish and quality of this wrench is very, very nice. Since these are precision instruments that are calibrated at the factory, you do want to take really good care of them and treat them really nicely so that they can maintain their calibration for a long time to come. And as you can see, a manual calibration was done on this exact wrench, which is nice because it gives you a level of confidence when you're working on expensive equipment where torque settings are important. This thing is powered by a couple of AAA batteries that just go right in the back. Now a couple things to note right away are that you do not want to use this as a regular wrench in any circumstances. So if this thing is turned off, do not apply any pressure to this because this is not designed for being used as a wrench unless you're actually torquing something. Let's go through the setup on this thing really quick just so you can kind of see the way you work your way through the menu and change the settings on this thing. Uh, you can see I just turned it on with the power button there and if you press this button right here it illuminates the display and that light will stay on until you either turn the light back off again or when the wrench automatically shuts off after the determined amount of time which I'll show you how to set here in just one second. If we press this plus button here on the front of the keypad it'll cycle through the different preset modes that are programmed into this thing. Now modes number one, two, three, four, and five are preset to those torque values that you just saw cycling through. Now presets number six, seven, eight, nine, and zero can be manually programmed. And in order to program one of those set points, all you have to do is press and hold the plus button as long as you are on six through nine or zero. So we happen to be working on a mini split here, so we're going to select the lower torque setting that we need, which is that 18.4 foot-pounds of torque. So we'll press and hold that plus button, zero it out, move over, one, eight, four. And you can see now it's set to 18.4. The next setting that we can adjust by pressing the mode button is the track versus peak mode. In peak mode it's going to save the highest torque achieved. So if I put a little bit of torque on this thing you can see it's holding that 9.5 foot-pounds and it'll just flash telling me that I achieved that 9.5 foot-pound setting. If I press this button right here it'll zero it out again. Or if we put it into track mode right here it will simply just continuously track the torque that is applied. So we'll go ahead and apply some torque to it again and you can see the torque goes up and goes back to zero when I release. Press the mode button twice to change the units of measurement. Right now I have it set to pound feet of torque which is what we want. And the last setting that we can change is how long this thing stays on before it shuts off. It can either be five minutes, 15 minutes, or it will just stay on forever until your batteries die. So I'm gonna leave that set on five minutes because I'm definitely gonna forget this thing on. What a fantastic interface. It's a really, really well designed tool. So we'll do a quick demonstration of what this thing does as it hits the different torque values. Real quick, if you guys are interested in trade related videos, make sure that you're subscribed and hit the bell to turn on notifications to see more in the future. Now this is one of the main benefits of using this type of a torque wrench is that it gives you both visual and audible indicators of when you're about to reach the setting that the torque wrench is set to. So I've got this thing just connected to a breaker bar here and we're just set on that 18.4 foot-pounds that set point that we just made. Now it's important to note that 
in the instructions, they want you to pull, not push, this wrench when you are torquing your fittings. So as we're set up right here, if this were connected to a fitting, this handle would be the handle that I'm pushing, and this would be the handle that I'm pulling. So this is the proper orientation for when you torque your fittings. Don't put the torque wrench on this side. They didn't really explain why that is in the instructions, but maybe someone can comment down below and explain why that is. So I'm starting to apply a little bit of torque. Seven, eight, nine pound feet. You can see that the green LED is flashing now because we're within 50 to 98% of our torque. And when we get closer here, we're at 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, and if it does a continuous sound, that means that we have over torqued it. And it kind of pulsates when you've hit your appropriate torque. So cool. So we're ready to torque a couple of fittings right up there. I already have my flare knot finger tight. So as we tighten this, the torque wrench will tell us when we have reached the correct torque setting. So here we go. So now we've reached the proper torque, but according to the instructions, they want us to actually back it off like so, and then reseat that flare fitting one time, which is going to just help that face to for sure seal up properly. So now we'll retorque it again to the proper setting. Perfect. So there you have it. That's pretty much everything that you need to know about the CPS digital torque wrench. Again, link in the description right underneath this video. If you guys want to see more about the mini split installation that I'm doing here, uh, you can click on those videos right here on the screen. This video right here is the one that YouTube thinks you want to watch, whereas these ones up here are the ones that I think are more applicable. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you right over there.